Hey everybody, welcome to Absolute Sound. Um, today I just got the i810 integrated amplifier from Angela Gilbert Young back in the store because we had to modify it for a customer. Thank you, Basil. And boy, is this thing great. I love listening to it. It's nice to have it back in the store. Unfortunately, because it's two months to build one of these, I haven't had mine built yet. It's coming. Anyway, not this piece. Folks at home, I'm going to cover that. This is my cheat sheet for some of the info. This is the integrated amplifier here. And this is the power supply down here that feeds it on three different big umbilical cords. One of the umbilical cords does the tube, lights up the tube because there's a tube in here. One of them does the signal line stage. There's a separate signal line preamplifier inside here. And one of them does the output transformer and output ICs or basically the power amp. So three sections inside there. Inside this, supplying that amplifier is over 1 million microfarads. Uh, most people don't even talk in the words of 100, 1 million microfarads. They talk about 50,000 or 150,000 microfarads. So this is a big daddy. And for those who don't know what microfarads are, they're basically if you have voltage creating a cup of water, which is wattage. I know it's not water, but the higher the voltage is, the higher the water is, pressure comes down. What the capacitance in here is, is like a lake of water to, joined with the other one on a huge hose so it can come in fast. That's the way we do it. And it's a, it supports that main power, main wattage we have. Because when the water runs out, the water from voltage or, or wattage in an amplifier is very short term. And it just depletes. And then so does music. So it sounds good or thin. Or if you want it to sound bold and rich and beautiful and full, you have to have an abundance of energy. Standard industry made stuff has the water and voltage and they usually go too high because the higher you go with your cup of water that's going to put pressure on your speakers and output, the higher the noise is. Noise goes with it. So you want that a little lower. So this is a very low voltage amplifier underneath 50. And the water that's in there isn't a kiddie pool like the industry has, which is 10 times more than, say, an average and expensive Japanese receiver would have. It is 200 times more. What that does is, as the sound fights its, its way through and, and energy is depleted, it's filled in quicker and it really never runs out. So that means the music lasts longer, has more colorful body and beauty, and doesn't run out. And our ears really love that. So we made a modification of this to add more. Usually in an amplifier that's this beautiful, you'd have to sell that if you wanted to move up. Say this was a $15,000 amp and you wanted a $40,000 amp, you'd lose money on the 15 on the trade-in and then you'd have to buy the 40. With this one, you can add this power supply. So what we did here is we added, oh, nearly three times what's in here. And I'll show you the back of this in a minute because I want to talk about the amplifier. So the amplifier, as you can see here on the front, let's look on the left side, there says this is B1, B2. Those are two balanced inputs, fully balanced XLR inputs for the amplifier. There's another one that says SE, single-ended. Single-ended is the RCA jacks, we all know, the left and right, red and whites. And to get those to engage directly, switched in the line so they don't bleed, we have a gate connection for each one on and off independently. That's a brilliant way to do things, and it's a very linear way to do things where they can't crosstalk. So right now I have an input and input one, so I'll leave that there. And then we have two knobs over here you can see on this beautiful amplifier. One above says tube. It looks like Basilis puts a couple of marks on here where he likes it the most. He probably likes it right in there. But the fact is that you can, these are, these are the amount of sig solid state signal in the line because these are in parallel together, joined as one. This one in the tube, we can turn up and down also for amount of gain in it. After we've achieved the tones and sound qualities we want, because rooms, acoustics, speaker types can be different. Music material can be different. When we turn the volume up and down, that's our main gain stage. It's a wonderful chameleon of adjusting sound perfectly without having to rearrange a room, change from upstairs to downstairs, all the things that we don't like doing. We can just have fun. If I want more boogie, I give it more solid state. If I want that warm, beautiful, ring tube, rich sound, slow it down and have it like a warm, fuzzy blanket, well, that's more tube and anywhere in between. Okay, so we've seen this and this modification, we'll talk about it's in the back and I'll show you how that hooks up and what we did. The 
Did I just break the microphone? Okay, on the back of this, it's over here. The amplifier has the power supply, as we mentioned before. You see these three cable connectors? One of them is for the tube filament, one of them is for the signal line, and one of them is for the power amplifier output. So this is transformer and output, signal path, tube heater or filament. The filament's the thing that lights up in the tubes that we glow. When you have 150% more, which is what we did in here, we added 150% more than we had originally, we create very, very stable heat inside the tube. So without that, you're, if you have unstable temperature inside of a tube, the tube doesn't function as well. It's not as fast, not as beautiful to listen to, there's more distortion. This way it's much, much quicker. So we go now from this power supply into this in, in between, and then we go from there on short cables directly into the amplifier. Again, instead of selling off an amplifier, we upgraded it beautifully at three times. Now we're at oh, 3.2 farads in one stage, two, so which is 3.2 million, 2.5 million in another, and I don't know about the tube filament, but 150% more than we have originally, which was still overbuilt. So this is quite a, a, an achievement as far as uh, energy goes. And it'll all boil down to the thing sounding like a $40,000 amplifier for a meager upgrade. And no loss because there's no trade-in. It's a beautiful piece. And I hope you enjoyed looking at it. And I can't wait to hear the excitement of the customer that gets this back. And I'm sorry that I have to let it go back to Ottawa. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye.